This is part four of our own DIY variometer. And you may say, wait a minute, that doesn't look like the one from part three. And you're right, there's been some significant changes. Uh, David left a comment last time stating uh, how I can make connections between the shaft and the coil. Uh, and he pointed to, to was it Westinghouse made variometers like 100 years ago. And of course, you know, Westinghouse is a good company and they had a lot of time and good engineers to work on it. So they have an interesting solution. So I'm still figuring out the connection part, but these tabs have to do with that. So I'm, I'm going to either run a coil across here. Let me uh, shift my bigger model and I can show you more easily. The variometer that I'm copying it transferred electricity to the shaft. As I said in the last video, what happens is there's a coil on the outside here. It transfers through the shaft to the inside coil, goes through the inside coil, comes out the backside, and then goes to the bottom of the outside uh, shell coil. Okay, so we have to do that. We have to make those electrical connections. And the model I am working from they did something like this. They had two strips of metal like that. And now you can see what those tabs are for. I added is to hold the strips in place. And it acted like a spring. And yeah, I mean, you could, uh, it would transfer the electricity just fine. You'd run your wire down here, connect it on. Uh, the disadvantage of this system is there's two. One of them is the friction and it starts wearing through the brass. Brass on brass, steel on brass, whatever you're using uh, is going to wear. And the other problem is that you're going to get noise because anytime you have, you know, kind of a friction thing like this with electricity, it's going to generate, yeah, it's going to generate uh, static. So uh, as David pointed out in the comments last time, he said, go look at what Westinghouse did. And Westinghouse has you know, a lot of brilliant engineers for a long time. And the way they were working on this problem. And what they did is they took a coil of flexible wire. And what I've got for my model is, is uh, this solder wick. And they just attached it to the shaft like this. And to the wire, to the outside coil wire. And because the variometer only has to rotate 180 degrees. Yeah, you can uh, just deal with it by having a coil of flexible wire and it moves like that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the other solution. I'm debating over which I'm going to do. <laughs> I could do one on each side, but um, yeah, but so the tabs are to mount uh, whatever I'm going to do uh, to connect the uh, shaft to the outer shell coil. Okay, let's go back to the uh, little model and I will show you what I've been up to on that one. Now we know what these tabs are for. They're to mount the electrical connections to the shaft. Let's look inside here. As I mentioned, this only has to turn 180 degrees and in fact it's a huge benefit for it to not rotate all the way around. So you can see the other change I've made. I've added a tab here and a tab over here and then same on the opposite side so that the ball cannot rotate more than 180 degrees. Actually, of course, it rotates a little less then, but that's okay. Uh, the other thing I did is I flattened out these sides right here so that the ball would not move. It's more accurate in its travel. It doesn't have as much play uh, on the shaft uh, direction. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Oh, wait a minute. Now there's one more change I forgot to mention on the outer shell. I also added some tabs right here and here. And that allows you to drill a small hole through there to start the wire. And this holds the wire. So here's where you start the wire. You always start on the smaller end and then you wrap this direction and then it uh, ends here. And so, yes, this will just hold the ends of the wire nicely and without having to use like a lot of glue or something. Okay, so um, let's look at one more thing before we go for the day. This is the outer shell and 
Here's that little tab I was just talking about where I started the wire. This is the end of the wire right here. Starts through here, wraps around and around and around, and goes through that tab right there where it helps fix it in place. Um, yeah, so that's actually a fully wound top and bottom external shell. And then we have the other half. And let me talk about that for a second. One improvement I made while, while actually doing the process of winding this is before I was drilling my hole straight through. Now I'm drilling at an angle. So the wire, the wire will go in like this. Otherwise it just puts way too much stress on the wire and it won't lay flat. I've also shifted to, uh, what is it? 20 gauge wire from the 19 because for most people, the, the 20 is easier to get. Also, uh, the 19 is frankly a little bit thick and the clearances between the, the outer shell and the inner ball, uh, pretty tight, pretty tight. So here you can see our tabs, tab here, tab here. And this is the top half. Obviously I haven't uh, joined them or I haven't glued them together or uh, soldered the wires together yet. But that's the inner ball. And then we have the top piece. And you say, how come you don't have a shaft and just finish it? <laughs> yeah, I had a blowout with the, my order to offer the brass rods for this. Things got bent and dented and whatever. So that hasn't happened yet. But that's, you know, you can see we're getting there. Uh, now what we need to do is add our shaft, make our electrical connections, and that's pretty much it. Okay, well, um, one, one other thing I will talk about briefly is I made knobs for these, uh, the big version and the small version. And of course, I will post the links to those online so that if you're already ahead of the game, you can uh, get hold of those and uh, keep moving on. Okay, so that was it for uh, this round, part four of building your own DIY variometer. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your home crystal radio and electronic experimentation.